Welcome to the Nicholas 11 X12 technology. Today we're looking at the Gigabyte GeForce GT640 2GB DDR3 graphics card from Nvidia. This is a brand new 28 nanometer card and today I will show you how well it does. Before I continue I'd like to thank Forticus for providing me this product and I honestly think it's one of the best computer stores and online shops in Europe. I'd really recommend it. But now let's take a look at the box. Once again we're looking at the Gigabyte graphics card which would be the Nvidia GeForce GT640 with 2GB of DDR3 video memory. This isn't a regular GT640 though. Instead it's an OC version so basically a factory overclocked card which also uses the new PCI Express 3.0 interface. The box itself looks pretty cool with that snake eye or whatever this may be. On the back of the box you'll get lots and lots of details of this card and one of the highlights would be the gold plated HDMI port. So this should be really high quality. On this side you will get to see some specifications like 2GB of DDR3 memory, 128 bit bus width, PCI Express 3.0, DirectX 11 and of course HDMI support. Again pretty basic but nice box. But now let's open it up and see what's inside. Alright here's the Gigabyte quick installation guide and the driver CD of course. And then there's the card itself and the anti-static bag. There are no accessories included. Now here's the card, but I'll quickly remove all the plastic protection so we can take a closer look at the card. Good, as you can see it's very small and short. It has a pretty good large fan to keep this card cool since it's factory overclock. The aluminum heatsink itself isn't bad at all. This GPU isn't closed. This would be good for airflow, but the aesthetics don't look too good. They could have designed it a little better. Here, as you can see, there's no additional power connector required. So yeah, the graphics card doesn't look very beautiful, but it's alright, I guess. On the back of the card, you will see the blue PCB, which looks really, really empty, I have to admit. Here are the four metal screws that keep the heatsink mounted onto the GPU. Again, it uses the new PCIe 3.0 interface, but unfortunately, it doesn't support NVIDIA SLI. It's a dual slot card and offers one VGA, two DVI ports, and one gold plated HDMI port. So this is a pretty good choice that Gigabyte made, I really like the ports that they offer here. But again the overall design doesn't look good to me in terms of beauty, but who knows maybe you like it. But now let's move on to the specifications. The Gigabyte GeForce GT640 graphics card offers 2GB DDR3 memory and uses the GK107 GPU. It has a core clock of 1050 MHz, a memory clock of 900 MHz and a shader clock of 1050 MHz. The TDP would be 75 watts and the new 28nm architecture is used. DirectX 11.1 is fully supported and this card has a bus width of 128 bit. Unfortunately GPU-Z crashed every single time when I tried to launch it with this graphics card and so I can't show you that. But now let's move on to the benchmarks. This is my test system. As always I let 3 Mark Vantage do the first run at the performance preset. And here's the GPU score. I get 7995 which is almost 8000. And that is pretty low for the price. If the price was lower it would be a great score but it isn't in this case. And we are talking of the overclocked version here. This card isn't running on stock speeds. So the price performance ratio would turn out really bad here. So yeah this would be the first shocker I guess. On to a 3 Mark 11 at the performance preset then. Maybe I get more points out of this card. Unfortunately the system scores really low with this card. I'm talking of P2657. You'll be fine if you play games in low settings, maybe even medium, but that's depending on the game actually. This was tested with an i7-2700K CPU by the way. Next is Cinebench release 11.5 where I get 52.20 FPS in the OpenGL test which can be considered as an ok result. Of course it could be a little better. But now let's run something demanding like the Unigine Heaven benchmark 3.0. Don't worry I'm running things on low to normal settings since this is a low end to mainstream card. The API is set at DirectX 11, tessellation at normal, shaders are on low, 2 times AF, 2 times AA, and I'm running this at full screen 680 by 1050. Here I get 22.2 FPS on average, 11.3 FPS on minimum, 46 FPS at max, and the score would be 559, which well, isn't very high for these settings. So far I'm not very pleased with the results I got. Good, and now to the last Planet 2 benchmark at 680 by 1050, 2 times AA and everything else basically on middle settings. So I'm really not stressing this card out. In test A I get an average frame rate of 31.4 FPS, which isn't bad, but for the settings, well, not the best result. It ranked B. Now we're talking of the letter B. Let's roll out the test B. 
Here I get 22.2 FPS on average and rank C. So again, I'm actually disappointed. In firm mark at 680 by 1050 and at these settings I'll run a short benchmark test. As you can see the card scored 684 which is low of course and the average frame rate would be like 11 to 12 FPS. I ran this test for 60 seconds and the GPU temperature went up to 40 degrees Celsius. But now let's move on to the game benchmarks. Here's the new Dirt Showdown game at 680 by 1050 and everything else maxed out. Of course I'm not expecting playable frame rates but still I got 13 FPS in minimum and 16 FPS in average. Now when I lower the settings to 2 times MSAA and go down to high I get 39 FPS on minimum and 47 FPS on average which is pretty good and I can't complain. This runs fairly good and not to speak from medium settings. In Battlefield 3 at 680 by 1050 and on ultra settings but MSAA turned off and the AF load to 1x, well here I get 22 FPS on minimum. 29 FPS on average and 39 FPS at max. So for some people this might already can be considered as playable but not for me. I need at least 45 FPS. So what I did is I lowered the settings to medium. And this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen so far. I get the exact same frame rates as if I played an ultra. This is crazy, what's wrong with this? Seriously, this isn't a joke. This could be a driver issue though, but at the time of this video I was using the latest version. And now to the temperatures. On idle I get 25 degrees celsius which are 77 degrees fahrenheit. Now on load I didn't want to stress test this card because I had a very bad feeling. Not a single application could read the clocks of this card. Many of these programs even crashed on me and the PCB color changed a little to white or brown in some areas. I was really concerned and I didn't want to damage it and you also know why, it isn't mine. I'm assuming if this card worked properly it would max at 51 degrees celsius which would be 124 degrees fahrenheit. The ambient room temperature was at 21 degrees celsius which would be 70 degrees fahrenheit when I ran the idle test. The next and final test would be the power consumption. Unfortunately I can't deliver you the results since my watt meter broke and I couldn't get a replacement at the time of this video. But the TDP is 75 watts, it shouldn't actually be high but wait, the HD 7750 which I already reviewed earlier before has a TDP of 55 watts. So 20 watts less and 20% more performance. So I don't know, is it Gigabyte that messed up or is it Nvidia? All I can say is that's pretty bad compared to the competition. The Gigabyte GeForce GT 642 gb DDR3 graphics card definitely isn't the best choice. It costs about the same as the AMD Radeon HD 7750 cards but offers low performance of 20% and then it requires more electricity of 20 watts. This is kinda sad. The price of both cards are the same so performance wise well it's not bad. It will play games on low to high settings at max but that's depending on the game. The design of the card looks kinda ugly to me, no offense you may like it but I don't. Pros are it delivers acceptable performance and is very silent, that's all I can say here. For the cons there are more things I have to say. First would be it has a bad price performance ratio, offers low performance, then it has a too high power consumption compared to the competition and lastly for my taste it's an ugly design. I give this graphics card a 4 out of 10 but wouldn't really recommend it. But instead I'd like to thank Forticus for providing me this product and in my opinion it's one of the best computer stores and online shops in Europe. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.